So it turns out that I was wrong. You actually can capture the camera image. It's just a little bit confusing. So it's currently in pretty much like pre alpha phase where it doesn't even show as a status on like the Chrome status site, but it is actually implemented. Uh, you have to enable some extra flags on your Chrome thing. So it won't like this is, is not consumer grade yet. Don't put this on your website if you just want random people to try it out, but it is good for experimenting. So you can get it that way. And then the other kind of issue with it is that it's really, it's a little bit challenging to get out the pixel information yet. So someone's made this really helpful helper function that helps you get that information out. It's a little bit tedious in that it requires a little bit of GL stuff, but um, yeah. It's an example of what we can do with the camera access in addition to the depth API is we can do some quick meshing so you can take a picture and it'll in very, very quick speed will be able to project the depth information um, onto a texture and then project the image from the phone onto that texture. And that'll give you kind of a rough mesh of the object. It's usually pretty poor quality because the depth mesh is not quite high enough quality for this type of thing yet, but it is really interesting to see how quickly it happens and it can you some really interesting results. Uh, also, if you leave the video streaming through this depth texture that you put on the screen, you can end up with this really neat kind of material overlay of things that has a moving texture. And a lot of the things can look very trippy and very, uh, it kind of reminds me of what happens in Doctor Strange and those kind of movies where they have those kind of like moving textures along 3D objects. And that's kind of, yeah, how it looks. This is a lot of hacky stuff, so I don't want to go over it in too much depth, but basically what happens is you have to get your required features to have camera access, and then you are given, WebXR attaches the camera to the view, and then you have to get the GL binding and attach that to the camera, and then that will give you something that's kind of like a video texture. The thing that's a little bit of a headache is that it also does some stuff internally within WebGL that makes it so that your textures are just videos of the what's happening, so you have to find a way of getting rid of that texture and then taking an image out of it and it's a little bit of a headache so basically one way that you can do this is you can take a smaller texture get that video onto that smaller texture and then take kind of a screenshot out of that and then that screenshot will be what we use as the texture and then you have to refresh it to get rid of the video text the web camera is getting projected directly to webgl and then we're basically taking a screenshot out of webgl stopping the video <laughs> and then putting that screenshot back into WebGL. So it's a little bit of a like roundabout way about doing it. And so I don't really feel the need to go into too much depth about this because by the time anyone really needs to use this in product, it's probably going to be like some better method. This is like a really halfway point. So I don't want to explain this in all that much depth. But yeah, that's basically the idea is you're you're sending it to the GPU with the API and like with WebXR is sending it to directly to the GPU. You're taking a screenshot of it, putting that back into the GPU. And once you have the screenshot of it, you can also put it into other algorithms or other things so it's it is like a full image at that point so you can kind of do whatever you want with it but it's a little bit of a headache to get it working so yeah that's that's basically the thing